There we are, everybody. We're back in the room. Sorry for sorry about all that. We've got everything back now. I'm um, even. I believe we've got our um our pictures back. So all is, all is working, good and proper. So a couple of wood turners uh, working at the IT. <laughs> so look, what I can do for you now is show you some pictures. Nick's going to be um, asking uh, the questions. So the project that we're doing here in the class at the moment is this one. So these are our nutcrackers. Um, yes, they are a Christmas decoration. Don't worry, we're not going into full-scale Christmas just yet. However, they work. And just to give you an idea of, uh, of my inspiration, this is a recent trip to Seafin, um, and that's a proper full-size uh, nutcracker there that we got going on. We're not doing anything like that today. We're doing a little 12-inch. Um, so let's go back. So I've got a few more uh, photos to show. Nick's mic in, um, battery on, everything should be good. Just tell Nick if you can hear us okay. Hopefully and, if you uh, can hear me okay. I'll okay. just like one thing like Simon Barnard in the UK says, all them Imperial Electronics trying to get down metric wires. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> right then, so um, I'm going to build one of these. We're going to do this super quick. The guys on the course at the moment, uh, guys and girls are going to be um, doing these throughout the rest of the day and um, and into tomorrow. So we've no we've sound just... still apparently coming from the sun. But I don't know. You got your ATEM switched on? Everything on. switched on. Have we got no sound at all? Nick sounds fixed, and my sound isn't. All sounds good. Ten out of ten. One, two, one, two. And somebody said it's on the other guy's end. It should be good. All oh, good for now. All don't good. do All that good. to me, guys. Come Just on. one person who can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to carry on. No more talking. You've all sat there and you've all been patient enough. I don't know what it's like in the UK if you're watching, but over here, the forecast for today, tomorrow in English, sorry, not American, is 38 degrees. Um, so it's hot. Luckily, we've got air con. Well, we haven't at the moment. We've turned the air con off, so it's not too noisy for you. Um, we're going to go straight to the cameras. I'm going to start turning. I want to show you a few bits and bobs here. So I'm going to start with the legs. If you didn't catch it before, um, I've already done the base. I've drilled them to uh, an inch and an eighth between centers. Okay. So we're going to um, now turn the legs. I was saying earlier today or earlier in the, in the other stream that we're not always blessed with the centers that I would be used to at home. So we must, um, you have to adapt. And so what I've done here is made a little wooden drive dog and pre-drilled the ends of what will be the legs um, uh, to six millimeters or, or, or quarter inch, quarter inch. And then the other end, I've got a, a nice single point center. So we're going to do this fairly quick. And someone was asking, I think it was Simon was asking um, earlier, um, have I got any of the skews? Of course we have the skews. We're teaching the skews. So I'm going to start turning at a relatively fast speed. So lay, turn the lathe down, turn the machine on, lay speed to zero, turn the lathe on. And then we're going to turn up to around about two to two and a half thousand revs. We're going to start with a push-pull cut. Okay, so if you're watching Mark Beckett, this is a push-pull cut. Okay, just back and forward. Let's turn the lay speed up a little bit quicker. I'm purposely not going to sand, just to speed things up a little bit. And on this first one, we discussed this yesterday in class, that the first one is fine because we don't have to worry about too much, too much detail. Well, you put your detail on, but we're not copying anything. So I'm just going to throw up this end. Then we're going to turn the lathe on, turn him over. Okay, in that little drive. And you see how wonderful that, just a spare bit of timber down to the taper to fit inside, acts as that drive really nicely. Of course, what I would normally use is a light pull drive. Light pull drive, single point center, drive center, anything that's already got a hole in it. There we are. So now we can start doing detail. Now, on these figures, you can keep them fairly plain, or you can decide to put a bead in. I'm going to put a bead in. And again, because this is the first one, I can place that bead anywhere. The bead's going to represent the knee. Now, that skew's too big to do that. Well, it's not too big, but it's not as easy to do a bead with that size of skew, or this size of bead with that size of skew. So I'm going to go straight to the 
little half inch or 12 mil. Just pop our kneecap in, soften the edges. And taper down. So this is going to be a, a, a soldier. So it's going to have a nice big thighs, kneecap, which we can paint gold, and then a black boot down here. So that one's essentially done. You would start sanding that now. That would be the next stage. But let's take that one off. We'll put the other piece of timber in. Now, I bet someone's asked already, but if you haven't, I'll tell you. This is soft maple. Okay, soft maple, which is widely available over here. Let me turn my camera on so I can look at you when I'm talking as well. So there we are. Um, we're going to turn the same speed for this piece. Now, normally I say turn the lathe speed down to zero, then turn the lathe on. But I know these small pieces, there's nothing different on this piece. I can go straight into the normal speed. Back to the big um, big skew. And push pull cuts, especially for Terry and Mark. Nick, were you contacted by Nathan last night? We need to say a hello to Nathan. Absolutely, we do. Wonderful young guy. Uh, I think he's going to be watching us a little later on. Yeah. Uh, catch up with so hello, Nathan. We'll we'll hopefully catch up with you uh, later on on the tour. Nice one. Right then, there we are. Now I just want to check one thing. I want to check, and I'm going to grab a set of calipers to do this. Um, we're going to check the diameter of our piece so ah lovely we need to check the diameter now we're copying over you see we're copying from the first one to the second so i want to make sure actually is my second piece of timber the right size or do i need to take a little bit more off they're cut from the same diet or i've cut them the same dimensions that just by luck is spot on Okay, so we're going to just clean up the set one end. I'm not going to do any shaping yet. I'm going to clean up the edges for edge, ends first. That one done. Stop the lathe, turn them over. There we go. Now, don't forget, you've got woodworking wisdom happening tomorrow and Thursday as well. Um, you'll have to ask the lads where they turn up or look at, uh, look at the, the stream as to what they're doing. Now, how much more do I need to take off there? And I'm just eyeballing this, so I'm just skimming. So I'm just truing up those edges. Um, the, is it quite important that these are the same length? If they're not the same length, then you're going to have a lopsided soldier. He's going to be falling asleep, not standing to attention, which is obviously part of the job. So now we can decide where that knee is going to go. So I'm going to put a pencil mark there and there. Now, this is the low spot of the V-cut. And don't forget, these legs are positioned right next to each other. So it's important that you get them in the same, pos the same position. Uh, we'll go back to that small skew again. So just using the heel of the skew just to round over and then using the same skew, I'm just going to taper down the shin. Now I have made these for you. I've done these on Woodworking Wisdom before, last Christmas I think it was. Um, but every year things change and, and they improve as well. So we're going to go over them in depth and I'm going to use um, a couple of episodes to do these as a larger project, probably into sort of October time. I'll give you a break. It's still the summer, so we're not going to mention the C word too many times. There we are. So we've got our legs. Now, they're pretty good. I'm happy with those. They'll do. Okay, so we can move on and up. All of these pieces are going to be fixed together with dowel. I pre-cut some pieces already, just so we're not hanging around too much. But there we are. Six mil, quarter inch dowel, um, and dry fit to start with. Don't glue anything together until you're absolutely 100% sure. Um, let's go for a longer piece of dowel in that one. 
Hodgepodge says that lathe suits you very nicely, Corin. I think you need to go ahead and get one for the Axminster lives back home. Well, actually, wow. Axminster do sell robust. It's funny you should say that, Hodgepodge, because um, hopefully Jason's going to be working on one in the next few weeks on Woodworking Wisdom. We've got one ready to go, and I've showed you it before. Um, it should be doing the tour of the shots, but we're going to have it in the studio to do some some demos for you. So, yes, it does suit me very well, doesn't it? I, ought, I think, really, I ought to uh, have one in my own workshop if Axminster's listening. But there. What, but wood, there. what wood are you using today, Colwyn? What, what am I using? So um, the base is maple, and most of the other turning is going to be soft maple. Okay. Let's just have a look. The actual the the the, um, the walnut that we're using here is beautiful. It's got some ripple in it on the for the base, and then the soft maple is just turning like a dream. Um, it's very very dry. Uh, we went and got this from um, one of the lock, Nick's lockups uh, a couple of days ago. Cut it all up. I spent a couple of hours cutting this up, but it turns just beautifully. I would recommend if you're making one of these things like maple, sycamore, lime. Um, beach even and especially if you're going to color them you want a neutral color something that's not going to give you too many problems um, and detract from that color so we've done the legs we've done the base we're going to go straight on to um, the body next and then we can drill the body get the arms ahead and the hat done so the body so we're on a three by three here the three by three i'll give you all the dimensions because i know i'll be asked so it's three inch three inch square and then four inches in length now I'm going to make that fit a router box. There's the router box. The router box is used to hold in a, uh, so this is a, um, a little cradle to hold in the router box. Now you can see, normally I'd use a, um, a router to create the, the slot ready for the mechanism. Today's course and on here, we're not going to create the slot, but you can use a bandsaw with, whilst the body is being held in here, or you can use um, a router like I normally do. Um, when we get into it in, in depth, then I'll supply you with the, um, the dimensions for the router box and the cradles and everything as well. Okay, so I'm going to make it fit that so we can then do my drilling. So let me just grab a router. I'm not going to be too fussy with centers. I can eyeball it fairly well. There we are. And again, it's the same material, soft maple. It's a nice neutral color. And um, we're going to take off the chuck and add um, a pro drive. Pro drive. Good thing with the robust, the, um, the American Beauty here is when I put that spindle lock on, I can't accidentally start the lathe. Um, so it, uh, it covers all bases. There we are. Pro drive is what we're going to go with. Okay. And we are, and let's give you, this would be a good shot of what's happening with the shape here. There's a specific sign that I need to go, go to to get it in my router box. And then we're going to drill for the arms and the back of the body. Lay speed to zero. Turn the lathe on. And instead of going for the skew here, I'm going to go for the roughing gouge. Rough down to a cylinder. So I'm going to measure the router box. And I'll give you measurements. It's not going to help you at the moment until I tell you how to make one of these. So the router box, I need to be down to two and three, two and three quarters in diameter. And I need to be in lengthwise. I need to be under. So I need to be three and seven eighths. So we'll start by cleaning up the outer edges. I'm going to do that just in this case with passing tool, I think. Or shall we not? No, let's use the, yeah, no, parting tool. So parting tool just to clean up that end. I'm not going to undercut. I'm going to go straight. Okay, so I'm going right the way down to the center. 
We were asking what brand of Live Center that is there, and I'm not Lo recognizing it. The Live Center is the Evo. Um, so it's the Evo Live Center, the Axminster Evolution Live Center. Um, the good thing with these is you can take out the tip. So you might see here that these, you've got a silver tip. Um, let's come back into the other camera angle. You can see a little silver tip. That can be changed. So if you damage it for any reason, it's a stainless tip. You can um, replace it with another. But you can also add other tips to this as well. So a cup center, for instance. Um, all of those fit this one. Um, it's a good heavy-duty center. The cup comes off. You've got a ring center underneath also. Um, so a, a, a nice big, I think it's around about a half-inch ring in that one. So it's a, a good size. Let me just check my length here. We've got a good amount to come off. So parting tool again. just double check the length once i've got the length there we are that fits in there nicely actually once i've got the length sorted we can then start thinking about the diameter so i'm going to go straight to my calipers so what do we say we said two and three quarters i'm going to be slightly under so it fits in there first time to save minute messing around there we are we got a lot to go yet so why don't we use the device, the parting tool here, just to give me an idea. Diameter. There we are, that's the diameter. So let's go back with a rough and gouge. We've got no shaping done at the moment. So we're just getting the dimensions right before we start shaping. And then we can start thinking about what shape we're going to make this one. So I'm just going to check that I believe this is still oversized, but that's good. That's good. Yeah, just a little bit on that very end bit there. So we'll raise the tool rest and I'm going to get the skew working again. There we are. Same with this top end. We want a nice 45. This is going to be the top of the cracker just before it leads into the head. Now, this is important. If you don't have this chamfer on this bit here, um, what will happen is the head will be straight. There will be nothing to curve the head into. So it's quite important to have that little chamfer. It's also quite important to have a belt. We want the waist of our soldier to be pinched in gives us something to decorate there we are and we're round over into the belt the waist needs to come over nicely just with a nice little half bead Now, I'm looking at the class at the moment. They know that they've got to do this in a minute. So hopefully the rest of the day for me will be relatively easy because they've already had the instructions. So it's all right. <laughs> right, we'll take that out of there. I'm, I do have to take off the little nibs, and I'll do that with a sander in a moment. But for now, I believe that should almost fit in there now it's, it won't actually i've got to do a little bit of tweaking the length is fine just the diameter is not happy so just a little bit more then we'll drill just the smallest amount we're probably talking oh, less than a sixteenth so a millimeter
That should do it. Still a little bit tight. That side, just the bottom. Just the bottom. Now, of course, I'm rushing. You won't be rushing anywhere near um, the same way that I'm doing. But it's, you know, just get this right first. Once you've done this, you can get it held in your box. You can get all the drillings. All the drillings done. Right, there we are. Now, let's move some of my tools out of the way. I'm putting them on the bed of the lathe which is right in my way. One last check, and we're good. Look, we're in there. We're in there. So all the way down. Good. Right, so one thing I need to do before I put, it, put that in the box is just remove the nib that we've got on the top. Now, you can do that uh, with a, a pull saw if you want to. I'm just going to very quickly add my... Um, sanding this and sand it off. Get the tail stock out of the way. And we're going to put the 114 on. SK114. And a little sanding this. Now I sent these over. So this is the um, the faceplate ring. So the Axe faceplate ring that fits into the C jaws. And a little bit of plywood. Um, or nylon, and then I've used just a little hook and loop system. So these are just normal power tool sanding discs, and this is a, a, a meter of uh, hook material, um, and that's available on the web, on the Axminster website. So nice and simple, and I've got loads left to do other discs. I made myself two up for this trip. I've got loads more left to do a few other discs if I need to. So expanding the jaws into the faceplate ring, there we are, and I'm just going to very quickly, lay speed to zero, turn the lathe on. I'm just going to very quickly sand that little nib away. Done. Not, don't want to create too much dust, but now what I can do is hold this in my cradle. Make sure I get this around the right way. There we are. Top. Top. And we're going to use our six mil drill bit. I'm going to cut in all of my holes. So I've got my arm holes here. Can, I, can you see that on camera? Let's do that. In fact, let's go to camera two. So these are going to be for the arms. And then we've got the legs. Normally I'd prefer a pillar drill, but just for you guys to get it on camera, we're doing a single hole in the head. That was just on the center point there. Then we can take it out of its cradle. And that's the, the body done. And you know I'm always talking to you guys about um, production turning and, and doing several at a time. Naturally, what we would do is just do all the bodies, create the drill points. Okay, we've got our, our two holes for the arms. We've got the legs. We can start building our nutcracker now. So that was the, the to be honest, that was the hardest bit done and out of the way. Now, it's a little bit wobbly. But I believe I'm going to bring this over to cameras. Hang tight. I need some longer dowel, but we'd make do. There we are. So, so far, you can see something coming to life. You can see the start of our nutcracker. So we've got the body. Um, and the legs. I'm just going to pop that out to one side. We're going to get straight into the legs. So we'll drill those. Um, we've created a few V blocks as well, which is going to help us in a second um, to drill. Certainly anything round that you've got to drill, and we've got to drill the side of the, the arms. Anything round needs a V block. You don't want to be stumbling and fumbling around trying to drill something. Um, 
with your hands dangerously in the way. So we've created a couple of B blocks specifically for this task. Okay, uh, one for cutting the arms and one for drilling. So it's worth doing, and they take literally a few minutes, if that, to, to make. So that chuck can come away. And I just want a center. What should we use? We're going to use tail stock, so a single point tail stock center. And I think I'm going to go with a slightly smaller, um, a smaller drive. Let's go with friction drive. You see me use these all of the time. So we'll go with our friction drive. And the shape I'm going to make is a very basic sort of suggestion of an arm. And I've roughly centered up. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Got my favorite center of all time. Thanks, Nick. Perfect. Now, again, you've seen me use these so many times. And the reason I like them is in practicing the skew chisel, they're, they look after you. If you get a catch with a skew, the timber stops and the center can keep going. So I like to refer to them more, more, as, a, um, more as a safety center than anything else. And that allows us to do that push-pull cut. Um, a little bit faster again, up to about 2,000 revs, because the diameter is really, really small. So back with a large skew, and it's again another chance to copy. A little bit faster. And just like the legs, it doesn't matter this first one. It can be whatever shape you want it to be. It's number two that you've got to think about. So what we do here, there's going to be a certain amount of waste. So let's grab my skew. I'm just going to create the waste. There we go. Um, and the hand is a simple um, Lego man shape or Lego lady shape. Rolling over. So a half bead. I'm not going to go down too fine with this yet. We've got a lot of work to do. So now we're going to do a cuff. And then the lapel, again, a little bit of waste to create before going into the detail on the shoulder. And then we're gonna remove the bit in between the shoulder and the cuff. Give him a bicep though, so raise in the center and down to the cuff. There we are. And that would be sanded. And back on the, the disc sander to take off the ends. We go straight into number two. I have to copy that first one. Do you want a couple of quick questions while you're doing that? Yeah, far them away. So Hodgepodge asked a couple. He said, have you ever tried, have you ever thought or tried multi-axis to maybe give it a bit of a belly on your soldier? He also obviously looked at my um, silhouette and had that idea. Um, the other one is, is pretty interesting question. He's asked if this weren't a demo piece, would you align wood body to have best grain section showing in front or since it's painted, does it matter? No, I it, guess does it depends matter. what it, what you paint it with. Yeah, well. it does. If you're going to go, um, opaque. So if you're going, uh, sort of aerosol sprays, those sorts of things don't make any difference at all. Um, if you're going to go clear stains and dyes, yeah, absolutely. You're going to have to, um, you're going to have to consider that, um, and you're going to you're going to see through the dye. So you want to have that grain lining up. Whether you decide to have um, the open grain facing or the end grain facing is entirely up to you. And it, well, I would have thought it depend on the timber that you use. But no, it does make a difference because it will appear lopsided if you if you have it sort of half and half. So you're either facing you or side on to you for the grain. 
where you put the arms. Really, really quite important, that one. Good question. I can say. Yeah. So, same thing, number two. Go. Oh. Hey, number two. Sorry. The side of my face. So we're going to check the diameter like we did the legs. Uh, lucky again, we've got that. Uh, we've got that just right straight away. So that was a bit of bit of luck. Now this isn't quite as important to get them spot on as um, as the legs were because these aren't stood right next to each other; they're apart. And especially if you're going to bend one of the arms. Um, again, I'm not quite sure if I got a picture. Yes, I have. So if we look. Um, at this picture a second. You can see on this one where we've got a trumpeter, where we've got a king holding uh, a mace, or the drummer in the background. We've actually bent the arms, and we've done that by just um, putting a 45-degree cut in the arm and then turning it around and rejoining it again and re gluing it. So um, it really does depend on what you want, um, you know, as to dimensions you give it. But essentially, they don't have to be exact, because even if they're stood to attention, they are far enough apart to to not see too much discrepancy. Saying that, we want a similar shape. So there we are. So just roughly putting my lines in. Roughly putting my lines in. Nick, you got to shout at me. If I've not got the right camera, just bellow down the, bellow down the uh, mic. Right then, so same thing again. Let's make a little bit of waste. We should call this one, we'll call this camera the bold, bold spot camera because it gets the bold spot on the top hair. of your head, doesn't it? You got this overhead uh, as well. So you, can, oh you should be able to have the goodness. right overhead. Even bolder spot camera. Let's go. Let's go that one actually because it's a there nice close view. That one. So V cuts for the cuff. Round over. Lego man or woman hand. Yeah, you get the top of your head. <laughs> you might want to try this one. And then a bit of waste. But then clean the end grain up. So when I present this in the next couple of months, like I say, we'll spread it over two or three sessions. I'm going to supply you with the line drawings of the nutcracker itself and the line drawings of the router box and the cradle. So you'll have all that information coming. There we are. That was lucky or by luck. That's pretty much the same. Luck or practice, one of it. 25 or 30 degree on the skew. 25 or 30 degree on the skew. So the, the further the angle comes back, so the more knife-like your skew becomes, the, the better the finish, but the harder to control. So I will leave that one up to you. Um, the Golden Way signature skews come around about 25 degrees. Um, and that's a, a nice, easy one to get you started. Um, if you're finding that difficult, put a secondary bevel on, the, the very front of the skew, um, or less of that, that angle. But like I say, the more knife-like you become, so further round, the better the finish, the more detail you'll get in. It's just a little bit harder to control. So you just need to be more, you need to be practiced with the skew. That's all I would say. If you're buying a beveled skew um, and you get those in a lot of starter kits, they can be an issue only because the angle is very slight. It comes right the way back. 
So again, secondary bevel will, will help you immediately. It will calm that skew chisel down for you. Right. I'm going to drill those two pieces we've just made, and then we can attach those to our, our nutcracker, and then we can move, move on to the head and the hat. And then, do you know, I think we're almost done for the basic part of that, uh, that cracker. Just going to get that out of your way. I'm going to use a hand drill. I don't like doing this, and I would only do this with the camera. Um, with the, well done, with the uh, V block. That's the wrong camera. That's the right camera. The right camera? That's the right one. That's right. No, that's the wrong camera. That's the right camera. The reason I would normally do this with a pillar drill is because a pillar drill is nice and straight. I've got too many moving parts about me. I don't end up drilling straight when I do this. Uh, I want to get my fingers out of the way, hence the B block. There we go. I do have another another couple of bits of dowel here. Now you can buy dowel. We sell dowel in, um, it's metric, it's six mil um, diameter. So you can go to eight mil, of course, if you want to. And fluted or plain. This particular one's plain, but fluted is great for for gluing because the glue is able to come up around the, the, the dowel. Um, but just cut to length. And again, use your um, use your glue, your V-block. Um, I'm using a little, oh, in fact, let me do one for you. A Japanese pull saw. Okay, I'll cut a couple of dowels for you. Is that within shot? Yeah. Yep. Let's cut some long ones because I haven't got any long ones at the moment. So a little V-block with a nice little 90 degree don't let, obviously don't let the 90 degree go all the way through, but this is great for, for cutting on the bed of your lathe or anything because I'm not going to damage the, the lathe, the saw or anything. It's a protective block for me. It protects my fingers as well. So there we are, nice and easy to operate in conjunction with a Japanese pull saw. Let's glue or fit together the arms. And we really are starting to come to life. So, a couple of bits of dowel. Get our partly made nutcracker. I'll show you properly. Let me just get it all together. It's all a bit loose at the moment because we haven't got any glue in here. Okay, so, so far, we are becoming more soldier-like or nutcracker-like. We need to make a head. Next, so head and hat. So we're going back to between center turning. Um, the head has got a hole top and bottom. Okay, so we're going to line up between centers using my little drive dog. In fact, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. So we've got very kindly donated by Bobby D, one of the guys on the course. He's got a light pull drive. Ordered from Axminster, go all across the pond. And we're just literally going to drive that between centers. Nice, quick speed. I promise I won't touch the center with my tools. Remember, though, if you didn't have one of those, whilst you're waiting for us to deliver over the course of four or five days, if you're in the U.S., um, then you use one of these. So just create your own drive dog. Okay. Right then. So lay speed to zero. Turn the lathe on. Twenty to twenty-five hundred. Roughing gauge to start with. That I wouldn't use a skew on something like this. It's too big a diameter with big corners flying around. And the head is a really simple shape to create. It's just a, a slight oval. Got to clean up both ends, of course, but let's get the shape in first. So diameter-wise, I'm going to check the top of the body. Check the top of the body with calipers. So remember, you've chamfered in with a 45, the top of the body, for this reason. So there we are. Let's 
So a round over. I'm going to go straight to the skew, but I'm going to raise the tool rest to do that. The bit I'm working on at the moment is the top of the head where the hat's going to join. So this can actually be smaller and it's not a given size at this point. The bottom of the head is a little bit smaller. We're there. So what I'll do now is just clean that surface up. Don't want to touch the center, so just ease away at that last minute. I'm going to stop the lathe and turn it over. Because I'm right-handed, I find it easier getting deep into that detail on my right-hand side. So I'm just going to flip, flip it over. Done. And of course, now you'll be sanding and getting that just so. The face is one of the only bits that's going to be left as solid timber. Okay, so and this is important. The question, going back to the question that we were asked earlier about grain alignment, this is, as you can see there, we've got like the open face side, or you've got these, the end grain, the side grain here. Okay, so it's depending on what you want to do. I would put this at the side of the head and have the open grain toward the front. It just looks a little bit better. Let's stick that on our body. All right, so again, we can see that we are starting to build the character. One last thing I'm going to do for you, I would normally do a peak. Um, I don't have the material at hand just at the moment, but um, I would normally do a peak. We're going to go straight into the top of the, top of the hat, and then uh, we can talk about that further. All right, so there we are so far. One more piece to turn, and I'm going to let you go after that. I'm going to change center, ring center in the tailstock. We are very, very simple shape is the hat that I'm going to do anyway. It's just a, a peaked hat. Same dimension as the head in terms of the timber. It's 50 mil, two inches in, in length and three inches overall in diameter, which you can, you know, you can change that to, to suit the style of hat you want. I'll just turn that lay speed down, turn them back up to about 2,000 revs, rough and gouge to start with. <clears throat> The faster you go, now there, there is a safety safety um, concern if you go too fast, of course. But the faster you go with this type of turning, the smoother the cut and the less pressure you generate for the for the lathe, for the tool, for you. This is a shape. It's a simple peak. You can run that down with a rough gouge. We'll tidy up with the skew or tidy up the top of the hat with the skew. So I'm going to leave enough waste to be able to take out the mark left by the center. But the skew chisel for this process is, is the best option. 
Um, so I'll say scooters. Scooters or, or spindle gouge is the best option for this, purely because it's going to leave the best finish on that end grain. So I'm going to put the tool rest up a little bit higher again and just clean up this section. There we are. And then that would be time for sanding. Let's get this nutcracker together. Just to show you what we have. And this is just a micro burst um, of, of what we're going to look at later on in the year. Um, and what these guys are going to be doing today. But I'm going to put this together for you. I'll get it in camera in a moment. Fingers and thumbs. Things that we haven't done so far now. Where's the best angle? There we are. Oh, that's quite good for a, a very quick overview. The things we haven't done on there, we haven't done the feet, haven't done the peak of the hat, haven't done the nose, haven't done the ears, all those sorts of things. We've done no sanding on this, don't forget. So you can see why this quite quickly goes into sort of a couple of days or uh, three or four evenings. Okay. So there. Give me a couple of months. Let's get a proper excuse <laughs> for Christmas. I'm going to get back in the shop. Um, give me a proper excuse to get properly into Christmas. And like I say, we will go into this much deeper over several episodes. I'll also go into decorating. It's something that we haven't done that much. And I'm a massive fan of uh, the Chroma Craft dies uh, for spraying these because you can see, still see the, sim the timber through it. Um, so I just want to thank everybody, really, for, for being patient today, for your continued support as well, because you don't have to hang on while I'm making technical errors and things like that, but I really appreciate it. I also want to thank the sponsors for getting us over here. Axminster Tools have been fantastic to, for, just for, for kitting out the workshop, for getting us here, for all the sponsorship that they're continuing to give. But I also want to thank Crown Tools, um, for us for getting us here, King Arthur Tools, Chromacraft, Tormek, Pizza Ranch, of course, which uh, which is very much on my mind at the moment, uh, Robust, Packard Woodworks, and of course, Wood Turning Crews. Go online, look for the Wood Turning Crews. They are uh, taking bookings for next year. So now I'm going to bring you in, Nick. Um, I'm going to run away in a minute just to, to end the stream. But thank you, everybody, for your support. Thank you to the team here, the students that have been patiently waiting. Very quiet, bless them. <laughs> exactly. They, they, they're paying for a course here and they're watching me do it. So they, well, we'll make it up to them in a minute. I'll buy them lunch. How about that? <laughs> um, so no, thank you ever so much for stopping by. Don't forget, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, um, share with as many people as you can and, uh, and subscribe. Nick, have you got anything to add? Um, Just follow us on social media. This is going to be uh, a first time for us. Whether Cole can put up with me for seven weeks on the road remains to be seen, but it's going to be an exciting adventure. And on social media as well, on our own uh, Facebooks and Instagrams, we're just going to be sharing with you part of our journey, of, of course, uh, and all our sponsors will be on the road with us. But really, just keep your eye out, um, and we'll, we should have a bit of fun on the side of it as well. But really appreciate you all being here. And uh, thanks for Colin for taking the trouble to come all the way over from, from the UK. It's going to be an exciting time ahead. It really is. If you want to come and see us both, come to the AEW. Um, I'll be on the Axminster stand there working with the wood turning store. You'll be on Chromacraft yeah. there. Doing and we the will be there thing. from Thursday evening. Somebody did ask that question uh, in the question section. How long will we be at the AEW? We will be there for the full complement of the show, uh, leaving around about Sunday lunchtime to our next port of call. So, uh, and if you watch uh, some of that, um, um, you'll you'll see where we end up. But we're going to do about seven thousand miles. <laughs> uh, so we've, we've got some we've got some driving to do, and we're just going to take you with us. <laughs> well, keep a watch on social media. Like I say, thanks again. I'm just going to swap cameras over, and I'm going to turn Nick off um, slowly. See you next time. It's been a real pleasure. Bye bye.